In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of how an ignition coil works and how to test them from beginner to advanced. Let's get started. Here we have a diagram of an ignition coil. We can see here on the left, we have our primary winding. It's going to have about 100 to 250 windings, and it's going to be wrapped around the metal core. On the other end, we're going to have the secondary winding, which is going to have a lot more turns. So around 10,000, 25,000 is pretty typical. How the coil works is we're going to control a voltage across the primary. So we're going to put battery voltage across, and that's going to create a current flow. That current's going to flow, and as it flows, it's going to create a magnetic field as it saturates with current. So a uh, coil wire is an inductor. It wants to resist current flow. So as we apply voltage, we can see here in this diagram, we're going to turn on. So this is going to apply the voltage across the coil and it's going to start charging it. The charging is going to be seen as the primary current ramp. We can see that as the coil ramps up to its full charge, we're going to release the voltage across the coil. So we're going to take away power and that's going to rapidly cause a magnetic field that we built to collapse inward and it's going to induce a voltage. That induced voltage is going to jump to the secondary winding and because the secondary winding has so many more turns, it's going to induce a lot higher voltage. For everyone who hasn't seen this demo, I here have an inductor. This is a 470 micro Henry inductor. These are axial inductors and I have it hooked up to an oscilloscope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rapidly swipe a couple neodymium magnets across it right over the top. And we're gonna watch, see for any induced voltage. So all I'm going to do is swipe like that. And we can see that we're inducing a voltage there. Swiping. And we can see that voltage that gets induced just by passing a magnet across it. Here we can see all the stages. So as the coil once again turns on, so we have power applied across the primary coil, we're going to see that the current starts ramping. Once the current is fully saturated, that the computer believes is enough, it's going to turn the coil off. So it's going to take away power, take away ground, and then the magnetic field is going to collapse. And that magnetic field is going to induce a high voltage in the secondary, which is going to jump across the spark plug gap. So we're working on a Dodge Ram 97 with a 3.9 liter engine. Our ignition system here is going to be a distributor with a single coil. You can see our coil hidden right back there. And the reason I picked this one is because I can remove the doghouse and we can get a good visual on all the ignition component components. So we have our coil right there. It's gonna come into our distributor cap and then we can see all our spark plug wires and we have good access to everything. And here we're doing our first test which is gonna be running the primary coil resistance. We're just checking between the two pins and resistance and we see we have 1.2 ohms. And we can check our secondary coil resistance by going from one end to the spark plug end. And we can see we're running around 10.5 kilo ohms. And we can check for spark by going off of a spark plug wire, because now we're checking the wire and the coil itself. And we got a spark tester in line. And we're going straight to ground. So as we crank this, we should see a nice blue spark. And we can verify commands by looking at our test light. We're on our positive wire and we can see that it's flashing really fast as it should be since it's on the main coil wire. So it's flashing about six times as fast as the engine is running. But we can see it is flickering indicating a command. 
a quick check that I'll commonly do in the field if it's a no start or we got a dead cylinder or something or I'm suspecting that there's no spark. I got my test leg going to ground. I'm going to pull one of the coil wires, so the one that I'm suspecting of an issue. And the trick is to hold the test leg closer than your hand or else you will get shocked. So I'm just going to secure this. Now I'm going to hold my test light close and I'm going to crank the engine over and see if we get spark jumping to my test light. And we can see we have a spark jumping to our test light. We can even see how far it jumps. And that's jumping pretty far. So we know that cylinder at least has spark. And we know that the coil is commanding it So here we're all set up already. I just got my amp clamp around one of the wires on the ignition coil. Doesn't matter which one. Got it plugged into our scope. Got our setup here. See I'm set to 10 amps at 10 milliseconds per division. Now we're just going to start it up. So here we have our waveform, and I'm not going to get too deep into the analysis on this, just to show the general idea. But we have a current clamp hooked up to our coil wire, and the reason why I use current first is because you're going to be able to get current on coils pretty much on any vehicle, and it's going to be an easy test. Uh, multiple, vehicle, multiple coil vehicles, you just go off of the fuse, you can put a fuse tap in there that has a loop, and then you can just grab all the coil currents all at once, very quick and easy. And here we can see, as we saw before, we have a current ramp. And the current ramp, things you're looking for is to make sure that it's smooth ramping. You don't see any spikes going up, any 90 degree angles. That would indicate that the coil winding shorted. If you're looking at a, a ignition system that has a multi-strike, it's normal to see the second and third or all the following strikes to have a 90 degree. And that's because that during the separate ignition strikes the coil itself hasn't fully exhausted its energy so it's just picking up from where it was before but here we could see our current is right around 6.9 looks like we're going to reach a peak of yeah right around seven and if we look at the forest for the trees we can see that they're all about even which makes sense because it's all the same coil we have a couple of odd balls here but nothing significantly out of the ordinary so just by looking at these waveforms i can tell you that the ignition coil is is receiving good power and ground there is no connection issues and the coil itself inside of it is not shorted so here i added an extra lead that's going to be the gray wire at the ignition coil that gray wire is coming from the pcm and it's the ground side control so this coil is ground side control one wire is going to be power from the asd relay and one wire is going to be a control signal from the ECM telling the coil to ground itself. And that's going to charge the coil, build a magnetic field. And then when the coil releases, that magnetic field is going to collapse and, cause, and induce the spark on the secondary. And here we can see exactly that's what's happening. I'm going to zoom in. So we can see here our current is in yellow or at zero. And our voltage is at battery voltage. That's just because we have 12 volts coming across the coil and we're not grounded yet. So this is just telling us that our coil is not broken or has an open in it. But now here is where the ECM grounds the coil, engaging it and allowing current to start building. So here's our control coming from the ECM. The current starts to build. So as soon as the ECM opens that transistor and stops applying ground to this, this circuit, the current drops. Voltage spikes because that magnetic field's collapsing. We can see a waveform being induced in it. And a quick and easy trick that you can do with this waveform is we can get our cursors out here and we can see that our battery voltage coming into this coil is at 13.4 volts. And we can see that our ground at peak current is at 2 volts. So we're going to we're going to do 13.4 minus 2. 
And we're going to divide that by our peak current, which has 7.6 amps. And we have 1.5. So Ohm's law, this coil is at 1.5 ohms. This is a little outside of the spec from what we saw on our static resistance check. But that's because this is a dynamic circuit. This is testing the circuit loaded. So it's going to be a bit higher. Now, you can see how if you test your, if you have multiple coils and you're testing at a centralized location, like at a fuse, you can very quickly check the resistance of every single coil in that circuit with just one waveform. And you, even easier, you could probably spot it out in the waveform. We're gonna clip the capacitive probe right onto our main coil wire. This is coming off our coil and it's gonna feed the distributor. And we're gonna hook this other end to ground. So just in case the wire is broken, we're not gonna send any high voltage straight to our scope. So here we have our secondary ignition waveform. There's a lot of information to be had here, but we're gonna keep it simple. Right here at the beginning of the waveform, you can see that there's a little spike down and then a ramp up. This is gonna be our dwell time from the period between when this ramp starts and from the period from the firing line. This is our ramp time of the core, the primary coil ramping as it's building its magnetic field. That magnetic field is inducing a voltage across the secondary. And then here we have our firing line. This firing line is going to show you a lot about secondary resistance. And you can see how we have some high, high secondary resistance in some of these. And that's likely going to be a bad plug wire. We can also then look at our Zooming in here, we can look at our burn time and our spark line. This is going to tell us a lot about how the spark plug condition is. And we can see here, the burn time is about 0.9 milliseconds. This is telling me that that spark plug gap is likely too wide and our spark plugs are worn. And we can even look at the tail of this burn line. And that tells us a lot about how the mixture itself is combusting inside the cylinder. So here we have our voltage, we're on the main coil wire, that's why you see the RPM so high. It can cycle through, we can go to burn time. There we go. And we see our burn time is right around one millisecond. We got good coil oscillations at the end there. We can even check the engine's running lean or rich. And here we got our spark plugs out, and we can see that these are pretty worn when compared to new. If we look at our hood, we can see that our spec is right at 40,000. So spec is 40, we're gonna set it to 39. Focus. See a new one just fits and these old guys they have about double so after I replaced all the plugs and wires and came back and got another current ramp and a secondary ignition waveform to show the pre and post we can see here better how as a current ramps in the primary coil that the secondary ignition also ramps. And we can also, if we turn off our coil, we can see how our secondary ignition is a lot lower now, indicating that that issue is likely the wires itself causing that high secondary resistance. We can see our burn time is now 1.2 milliseconds, indicating that that short burn time was due to our wide spark plug gap. So this is gonna apply to three and four wire coils. If you look at the coil wires themselves, you can usually figure out what's going on. So we can see how we have on every single coil, a nice pink wire with a heavy gauge. So that's gonna be our main power feed to the coil. We're also gonna have a thick brown wire on each coil, and that's gonna be our main ground. When dealing with a coil with more than two wires, the igniter module is going to be inside the the coil itself. So what that means is that 
or taking the job off the ECM to actually handle the current switching. The purpose of that is to not only make the ECMs more reliable, but they're also going to be cheaper. It makes a slightly more expensive coil, but that coil, if it fails, it's not likely to bring down the ECM with it. Now, testing these things is pretty much the same. We can coil ramp this guy. We can also check for command. Command is actually easier to check here because we can. there is a separate wire just for the command. And we can see that wire by looking at these coils and we can see how that second wire after the pink wire is a different color on each coil so that tells us that that's going to be our control and that's usually going to be a, some sort of 5 volt signal and sometimes on these four wire coils you'll get an IGF or a ignition feedback and that's basically there to let the PCM know that, okay, an ignition event has occurred. Usually they're set off by a current. Some are set off by ignition ionization, which is a whole other topic. But testing these is essentially the same. You just have to know that the driver is inside of the coil and not inside of the ECM. So you won't be able to get the primary ignition pattern off of these guys because all the switching is internal. Now, not all three wire coils are going to have the driver inside the coil itself. Take, for example, this BMW with three wires. You'd assume that the driver is in the coil. However, we got three wires here. One's going to be a dedicated power from a fuse. One's this brown wire, which we would assume would be a constant ground. Then we have a black wire. This black wire, which is different on every coil. So here we have a black and yellow. Here we have a black and blue. That black wire is going to be switched from the ECM. So the ECM has a transistor inside of it and that's what's switching that. This red and black are the only two wires going to the coil. So this primary coil is driven off of the ECM. So we can get a primary voltage waveform on this coil. And this brown wire here that goes to this diode, that's there to suppress the noise that's on the secondary circuit so it's giving it a path to ground so that that noise doesn't transfer throughout the entire vehicle. In a vehicle like this it makes sense that if you have a coil issue if you're having an issue with a coil it makes sense to just swap it over to the next side to quickly test out hey is the issue in my coil or is there something wrong with either the wiring or the spark plug itself. However you, you can quickly get into some vehicles that getting to the coils is a several hour job and in that case you want to be able to have some other testing techniques so that you're not spending hours taking apart something just to figure out that that wasn't the issue. For example here's a Toyota where the rear ignition coils are not the most fun to get to. And this is uh, 03, so this is nothing new.